Okay, so I said I wasn't reviewing more of the Mi Notebook Pros. Well, here it is, the 14 inch model. Why not? I mean, I've covered everything else, all the 2021 models so far that are out, and I will probably cover the AMD Ryzen version of the Remy book as well. So this is the top spec 14 inch model of the Mi Notebook Pro. It has the Core i7, the 11370H, and the dedicated GeForce MX450 with two gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. This model also has 16 gigabytes of RAM, like all of them, and a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive, a 56 watt hour battery, Thunderbolt 4 support with this. For a 14 inch notebook, this is a little heavy, I feel. 1.55 kilos, now if we include the 100 watt Type-C charger, the Type-C to Type-C cable, and then the dongle, which you really will have to carry around with you because we've just got Type-C ports on this, then that brings it up to 1.81 kilos, which is, I guess, okay, but I would like to see a little bit lighter. Now this dongle included has HDMI out on it. It also has a Type-A port and Type-C input as well for charging at the same time when you use it. So matte silver finish is the one that I got, not the dark gray, which tends to show the fingerprints a lot worse than this. So I have not cleaned this laptop now and I've been using it for about a week and it doesn't really pick up the fingerprints. You can't really see them. Xiaomi logo right here, which is inside the metal. So it's not like a sticker on the top. It cannot be easily removed. Excellent build quality. But I wanted to point out that this alloy in my experience with now using the Mi Notebook Pros, all of them, over all the generations is quite a soft alloy, very easy to dent. So do be careful, put it in a sleeve to protect it. Now, yes, one-handed opening is possible. Okay, you can open that up and then we can see our keyboard. So not bad, this keyboard. However, we do have the half size arrow keys right here and the travel is about 1.4 to 1.5 millimeters. Backlit keyboard, two different stages. It is a very nice keyboard to type on. I have no missed keystrokes with this and the AI button is right here which was seen before on the 15 inch model and then the Redmi Book series too as well. So tapping this will then bring up the Xiaomi AI which is all in Chinese but if you uninstall the software then this will do nothing. Right here is our power button slash fingerprint reader. It does work very well to log us into Windows quicker than typing a password. Touchpad, it is a large size, it is smooth. It doesn't seem to me like it's a glass one but it has a plastic finish to it. Very finer movements do work really well with this touchpad and overall I think it's a good touchpad. I like it. I like the keyboard as well. There's not really anything I would change with it. Now the shortcuts here do work without having to push function. Function is then for the F keys along the top and I do prefer this because I never really use F3 or F whatever and I would use the brightness and media controls here before using those function keys. Right side of the notebook right here. So our thickness measuring here is approximately 15, 16 millimeters, including the rubber foot at the rear and then measuring at the top. So when I measure it sitting on a desk, that brings it up to then about 20 to 19 millimeters. So it's not the thinnest out there, but it's not bad. It does have an excellent solid build quality to it. So Thunderbolt 4, 8K30 maximum out of this one right here. We have Type-C USB 3.2 Gen 2. This is 4K30, so both of those can run two displays. So three displays in total, if you count, of course, the laptop's display. On the left, we have our charging port. So you can actually charge from the Thunderbolt 4 port too, and then this one. This is the main one. So this has a status LED flashing when charging, green once fully charged. And the charging time is very quick. It's just over... Uh, one and a half hours to fully charge this, or just under two hours is quite quick there. And a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support. Quality out of this one is very good. Now this Type-C port, we cannot output any display at all. So along the front, there is just this lip here, so our hand can, of course, lift it up, one-handed lifting there. And the back of it, metal again here. And I need to stress this fact that it is very good, the build. That's a huge step up from the previous generation. It's just way more solid, the unibody housing that they're using with this, which is CNC machine too, by the way. Four rubber feet, so the ones at the rear are slightly higher to improve the airflow. And there is no more torque screw hidden underneath these rear rubber feet like the previous generation. So T5 torque screws all around the outside. I'm going to remove them now and show you the internals. And so we do have the two cooling fans in this one. Remember the Remy Book 14 Pro that I reviewed, or the Pro 14, sorry. That one only has the single larger cooling fan, which is a bit larger than this one. So there's plenty of blades on it, and they are cooling both the GPU 
and the CPU. So it's a shared dual copper transfer heat pipe. And there's a larger one here at the top, a slightly smaller one down below. And spoiler alert here, yeah, just like all the other models, it will run into thermal throttling. And I believe even the AMD Ryzen series of the Remy Book Pro 15, which I hope to review on the channel, will probably have the same problem. Xiaomi has just not got the thermals right at all. Battery capacity, a little small, considering we have a 120 hertz screen. This is 56 watt hours. And it's really just not enough. I think they should have gone with at least 70 if they could have somehow squeezed that in here. So here's our NVMe drive. You can upgrade this. You can upgrade our wireless. And the wireless does incorporate to Bluetooth 5.1. This is the Intel AX201 card. So no room for a second NVMe drive. Not that we could actually use another one because of Thunderbolt 4, I believe, is taking up the rest of the PCIe lanes, of course, with that there. So the battery is screwed into place. Everything is screwed in here and very thick around here, the alloy they have used. So quality-wise, very good, like any other known brand laptop. It is very good and nice layout. It's just really, I feel the cooling, I need to improve that. Just put a little bit more copper in here or go with slightly larger fans. So we're looking at a 14 inch IPS screen with this. Now the maximum refresh rate is 120 hertz. It can also run at 90 and 60 via the function and S shortcut to change the refresh rate of the screen. Now it does have a little bit of light leakage that I can sometimes see just around the bottom corners, only when looking at a complete dark image. So I don't really have a problem with that with the screen. Now it is glossy, covered with glass. It's scratch resistant glass and fully laminated. And the brightness, 285 nits is good, but I would like to see higher than 285. Now, another positive about this screen is this, that it does have DC dimming. So you can see that it is not exhibiting any flicker. Only just when changing, you might see a little bit come through on camera, that is. But even at the lowest brightness setting right now, which is nice and dim, that's about 10 nits, that there's no flicker. So at the absolute maximum, 285 Really, I do wish this was a little bit brighter. Now, it does have an 88% screen to body ratio, and up the top bezel here, we have a one megapixel webcam, which is flanked by two microphones. So this is just in normal lighting. I turned off my powerful studio lights to give you an example of what it would look like indoors. There's no sunlight. There is just my normal kind of lighting would have on in this room, and grainy camera. The white balance does seem a little off. It's not amazing quality, but what I do like is the quality from the dual array microphones. They do sound good. So out of the box in China, this would have Windows 10 Home Chinese. Now this seller is very good of them. What they do is they install a legit Windows 10 Pro key. They then add English, so you don't have to worry about adding a language pack or having you do a clean install yourself. It's already done for us and I've checked it all out, everything seems to be legit there, and they have even installed a couple of PDF files as some guides. One of those guides there is how we can, well, change the languages there, but also Office. So Office is on this, and this tells us how we can enable and activate that Office version, which is in Chinese, but then later install, say, in English language pack, which is very handy to know that, and you can run that if you wanted that, because it's part of the laptop here. So it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD, which is an NVMe one, and I'll get onto the speeds of that. You can see that the drive here, 512 gigabytes, is a little on the slow side for NVMe. Now, much quicker than SATA 3, of course, and you will see under the device manager just a few other things I wanted to point out. There is our disk drive there that I showed you. So we cannot install another NVMe drive. Unfortunately, there's no space in there, and because of the PCIe lanes that Thunderbolt 4 uses, we wouldn't be able to get fast secondary drive in there anyway. So under the processor here, you can see that's listed eight times. That's because it is a eight threaded processor. So quad core, eight threads, and the maximum turbo is 4.8 gigahertz out of this core i7. And it does perform really well. The system in general feels very, very quick and snappy. Now with the UI here, with the OS installed, there's a couple of things. Now, if you hold down function S, we can chop between the different refresh rates. So 60 is best on battery. We've got 90 Hertz, which is a blend of battery life and fluid UI, and even 120 Hertz, which is super smooth and fluid. But I'm crap capturing this here in 60 uh, frames per second. So you're not gonna be able to see these differences there. And then the other one is the function uh, F, sorry, K. Okay, function K 
is the different modes on here. So we've got silent mode, balanced, and turbo. So I ran all of these benchmarks I'm about to show you on the turbo mode, of course, to get the maximum performance. So here we have Fire Strike. Now this is a, a demo version that you can actually download to of this run Fire Strike. You can get an idea of what kind of performance you can expect out of that NVIDIA GeForce MX450. It's a 25 watt version. And the scores here for what it is are okay, but it's certainly no gaming laptop. If you intend to game, you're a serious gamer, I would get something that has an RTX 3050 Ti or the 3050 or 3060 if you can over, say, a laptop like this. But having a dedicated GPU and a 14-inch notebook like this is very good to have. Night Raid score, so it's all right. I did expect it to be a little bit better here, let down a bit by a slower lower CPU score here because of some thermal throttling, which I'll get onto soon. And here you can see that uh, very good single core score here with Geekbench 5. Multi-core score is, again, on the low side a bit because I was expecting this to be over 5,000 for this chipset. Why is it a bit lower? That's because of the thermals, which I will show you shortly just after this. And here is the OpenCL. This is integrated graphics here using the XE, so that is the Iris XE, Intel's integrated graphics. We got a score of just over 13,000. And look at the difference here now with the MX450 dedicated GPU, just, well, it's well over actually twice the power there. So you can see the difference in power. So that's why we have the dedicated GPU. It really does aid us in things involving 3D. So 3D CAD work, games, and things like that, things like that will be a lot smoother versus integrated. And lastly, for benchmarks here, Cinebench R23, CPU score, the multi-core score there. Again, I'd expect this to be a little bit higher. Single core score performance there, very good. Thanks to the improvements they made with the 11th gen, 10 nanometers. We are finally seeing some improvements coming through there. They have been a little bit behind. And then onto our thermal. So this is the gray area of all of the 2021 laptops from Xiaomi that I have reviewed. So the Redmi Book 15 Pro, the 15, sorry, the 14 inch model and the 15 inch Mi Notebook Pro also the same, just like this model here. So the 14 inch model peaks at 97 degrees. It triggers thermal throttling performance. If you intend to push this very hard, will be affected. Fan noise isn't too bad. Uh, and let's take a look at the surface temperatures now. So we can see it's hitting around 50, 51 degrees Celsius, just above the keyboard. Right in the middle of the keyboard is a little warm to the touch, that area. Palm rest and the touchpad do remain cool, however. So this is one area, it just gets a little too hot for my liking, getting up to 51 degrees Celsius. And taking a look now at YouTube performance. So I haven't even loaded this in, and I just wanted to show you that Everything is quick and fast on this laptop, as you'd expect, especially lighter tasks like this. Chrome use, you can have like 20 tabs open and it's not gonna be a problem at all. So what I do now is just search one of my own videos in 4K. I'll run the stats for geeks and we can see if it is going to run into any problems here. I'll just mute that so no audio is gonna come through for that. Skip that advert, of course. Okay, so set this to 4K. And you can see this is very, very fluid, smooth. And at the moment, no drop frames and hitting full screen here in Chrome. Still no drop frames. And even my buffer health here is surprisingly good for my connection, which is only LTE, 4G that I'm running. So this is great. Performance with YouTube, media playback, video files, including demanding ones, VP9, HEVC, all smooth, all good. Really, this is a fast, very fast laptop for these kind of tasks. For our speakers, we have two downwards frying DTS tune speakers. These are no way near as good as the speakers in the 15 inch model. I find them to lack in volume and they are lacking in bass as well. They're very average to poor speakers really for a premium notebook like this. k editing with adobe premiere pro this does seem to be good as expected like the other me notebook pro the 15 inch version and even the readme book series it seems about on par here it just does, seems quite good so timeline this is only at a quarter playback resolution you could run that at half and it will still be around 30 frames per second there which has not been too much of an issue Export times, however, because of the MX450, it does tend to slow it right down. So I'll do the test right here. 
export that. Approximately 10 seconds left now, and no, it is looking quite slow compared to the other models as well. So if you do the export just with the XE graphics and not using the NVIDIA 450, this will be just over a minute. And you can see now that this is going to be two minutes and 20, there we go, two minutes and 23 seconds approximately, you could say, to export one minute of 4K footage. And looking now at some gaming with the most difficult game out there pretty much for this system to render and that is Cyberpunk. So I have it set to the lowest, well, 720p. I could actually go low on the resolution, but it looks terrible. And on the lower settings, of course. So right now we're looking at 40 frames per second. So this is performance that is probably better than the PS4. Maybe not the PS4 Pro, but definitely the PS4. And it's okay, it's playable. So if this was on the integrated graphics, you would be looking at about 18 frames per second. And you can see in this darker area going through this part of the map that it does dip down to 33 frames per second. So what I'll do is just jump out of the car right here and I'll show you what you can expect on foot here that the frame rate has now increased quite a bit. So up to about 45 frames per second and you know, that it's playable. So that's what we want out of a demanding game like this. So if you wanted to play games on the side and you're not that fussed about the performance, especially not too worried about running 720p, then I would stick with that with most of the AAA titles and you will get a playable frame rate. Then Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this is the in-game benchmark. I ran it on the low settings preset at 1080p and we get an average of 51 frames per second which is not too bad, but we aren't taking advantage of the higher refresh rate screen here, at least not with this game. But a game that we can do so is Counter-Strike, which I will check out now. So we are well over the 120 frames per second that we want because with the 128 refresh rate, this is very, very smooth here. I mean, you could set it onto V-Sync if you wanted to. Of course, this does not have G-Sync or anything like that. But good that we're getting well over that, even with the smoke going on. Although, look at that, it's getting close down to almost 120 frames per second. But the noticeable difference going from 60 with most of these laptops, 60 hertz, and then 120, especially with a game like this. Oh, I can't believe I just died then. You really do see that difference and it's so much smoother. So if you were intending to play games like this or light titles, you can take advantage then of having a high frame rate with that high refresh rate screen. And just like the 15.6 inch model Linux, it didn't want to run. That's Linux Mint, the latest distro that I'm trying to test out on this latest, sorry, build. I didn't test out any other distros out there, so they could work, but Linux support looks very patchy at the moment. It should hopefully improve. Now I did disable secure boot. The BIOS is not unlocked to us, okay? So we've got no advanced settings that we can change. The only thing we can change is the language. We can change the USB ports that they can power other devices to be on or off. Uh, the backlighting on the keyboard, you can set it to be always on instead of the 13 second timeout on that. And that is really it. Now the battery life. So this is actually a little bit better than the 15 inch model, probably because of the screen, the slightly lower resolution. So this one's 2560 by 1600. It's a slightly duller IPS, maybe that helps too. I ran it at 30% brightness. So it will go for about seven hours of mixed use at 60 Hertz. So that's using the function S to lower the refresh rate on the fly there. So you can go from 120 hertz to 90, and then to 60. Now at 90 hertz, you're looking at approximately about five and a half, six hours out of this, which is uh, not that great. And then at 120 hertz, it really burns through the battery. It's about three hours then. And if you were on the dedicated GPU, you're looking around just under two hours then at 120 hertz if you did something very demanding. So if you're editing videos, at the same time, multitasking, doing all sorts of things at 120 hertz, it's just gonna kill that battery quite quickly. Now the 100, 100 watt charging on this is very fast, it's good, so it's just under two hours to fully charge it. We have Thunderbolt 4, that's great too as well. The drive speeds are okay, but we cannot add another SSD in this like we could with previous models. There simply is no space, and we wouldn't be able to run another NVMe drive due to the PCIe lanes being dedicated to Thunderbolt 4. But still, a SATA 3 M.2 drive would have been great to have in this. So we have the two cooling fans. All right, thermals, same story again. Xiaomi, just, they've just completely screwed up when it comes to thermals for this uh, year's new models here. So the Redmi Book Pro 14, Pro 15, 
the Mi Notebook 15.6, and then this model, exactly the same. They'll hit 96 or 99 degrees Celsius, and they will thermal throttle, affecting their performance. Now this one, because of the dual fans, okay, cooling is about, well, three degrees less than the other models like the Redmi Book with a single fan, but a larger fan in them. And then the surface temperature of the keyboard gets very, very hot, up to 51, 52 degrees Celsius, which I do not like to see. It's a little uncomfortable in the middle of the keyboard there. Now the other thing to note that the performance of the CPU is actually less than the 15 inch model, even though it's got the same CPU in it. Uh, why is that? That's because they've used Xiaomi lower power limits in the smaller size here to help combat, well, it overheating really, to stop the thermal throttling. So that is why my score, for, say for the CPU score for 3D Mark Fire Strike was less than the 15.6 inch model because of that. So the performance is down a little bit, but it's not really by much. You're looking at like five, 10% less than performance. Now the speakers on this one compared to the 15 inch model, they're disappointing, okay? They sound a little flat. There's no real bass to them. And well, they should actually be louder. So all up, this model for me, I think I like the Remy Book Series better because Remy Book Series has, has, has the Type A ports on it. It's just more practical. It has a matte screen. Okay, it's only 90 hertz. This one, 120 hertz is good for the games like Counter-Strike. You can take advantage of that. But all up, they could have done more. They could have put a larger battery in this. They could have given it at least a Type A port, slightly better speakers, another drive there, you get the idea. Don't get me wrong, for a 14 inch laptop, this packs a lot of power, having the dedicated GPU, which most do not, most have integrated graphics. So if you're after that option, with a great keyboard, a great touchpad, and you can live with those cons that I've just mentioned, then yeah, by all means, go for this laptop here. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the Mi Notebook Pro, the 14 inch model. Check out my reviews of the 15.6 inch model. Also the Redmi Book series, I've reviewed the two 2021 models. And maybe I will review the 15.6 inch model of the Redmi Book Pro 15 with the Ryzen 7, the 5800H. I may have that one. So do subscribe and like this video, of course, if you liked it.